the fight pit. This is for the NLW 24-7 title. Let's fight. Welcome to the fight pit. The following contest will be fought under blood sport rules. The only way to win is by submission or knockout. Introducing first, fighting out of Birmingham, England. He stands 5 feet 11 inches, weighing in at 221 pounds. He is the bruiserweight, Pete Dunn. And his opponent, fighting out of Tampa, Florida. He stands 5 feet 10 inches, weighing in at 200 pounds. The Messiah of the Backbreaker, Roderick Strong. And it should be mentioned, this is the final of the Bloodsport tournament. The winner will face Alistair Black for the 24-7 title in that fight pit immediately following this match. So stay tuned to see who will fight Alistair Black. And this matchup is underway. Bloodsport rules, Pete Dunne and Roderick Strong. And Pete Dunne gets the aggression on his side early, but you can see jockeying for position is Roderick Strong looking for an arm bar. And again, working over the arm. That's what you gotta do in this match with the knee, sends him into the cage and also plants him on his stomach and now gonna go for the ankle. In the early stages of this match, it is crucial to get leverage on your opponent and work over a body part as Pete Dunne rolls through the ankle lock. Remember, they have to immediately face Alistair Black, so you wanna conserve their energy as much as possible. Pete Dunne gets sent into the cage, lands on his feet and a vicious kick to the side of the head. Now Pete Dunne picks him up for the X, breaks it into the cage. And the ankle lock applied by Pete Dunne. Here in the fight pit. This is full of action and you'd figure that this is going to be a very big test for both of these men. Although their styles are complementary of a match where knockouts and submissions are only ways to win. And now Waterick Strong rolls through into the stronghold. Is this going to be what makes Pete Dunne tap? This is what he used to make Shawn Michaels tap in their Bloodsport semi-final. But Pete Dunne wrenches the ankle and now stops on the knee. And the foot of Roderick Strong looking for the bitter end. But Roderick Strong goes behind for a German. And now Pete Dunne on the cage leaning and there's a big time forearm from Roderick Strong who picks him up for the end of heartache. The Messiah of the backbreaker. we a big time backbreaker to Pete Dunne. And again stomping on the spine. Looking to work over the back of Pete Dunne. Sending it into the cage. Goes for a knee. But Pete Dunne and it scouted and hits him with a south power bomb. What an incredible counter to the knee of Roderick Strong. And Strong's days. But look out for Pete Dunne. Stomping on the fingers. He's going to break them. Breaking the fingers goes for the bitter end. But Roderick Strong now with an angle slam into the cage. And again works over the back. And that back of Pete Dunne has been beaten on throughout this match. This fight heated up. The Bloodsport final. Can he get the stronghold in and put it away? Pete Dunne trying to wriggle his way free. And he doesn't kicks Roddy into the cage and a monkey flip. Now he's got the arm in a Kimura. Another fingers, oh my god! Snaps them again and again! And Roderick Strong has to tap out. Pete Dunne is the winner of the Bloodsport tournament and now he goes on to face Alistair Black immediately. We've got a brief minute interlude before that match will take place, but first of all, let's take a look at the action in this incredible fight pit. First of all, Pete Dunne using the X-Plex into the cage. He went for the bitter end on several occasions but could not connect. Roderick Strong connected with that forearm and the end of heartache. And then this was the turning point. Pete Dunne with a power bomb. Even the angle slammed into the cage. Couldn't do it. And you saw Roderick Strong working over that back. But Pete Dunne managed to reverse it into a Kimura. Then snapped the fingers. That means Roderick Strong has to tap out. But now the question is. Alistair Black has seen all the damage that Pete Dunne has taken. He's seen him in the stronghold. The damage that's been done to his back. But Alistair Black has been scouting this fight pit. 
and now he's a fresh man heading in to this solid steel cage and here comes the 24-7 champion Alistair Black and will it be Pete Dunne who faced to Black in moments remember Alistair Black actually won the 24-7 title inside a steel cage it was Hell in a Cell against The Undertaker but the way to win this one is knockouts and submissions only however we know the extensive MMA training that Alistair Black has gone through in the Netherlands he's no stranger to this kind of setup he done as well with his British strong style I am very much looking forward to seeing how this one turns out and these two men fighting with all they've got and Pete Dunne his back may be sore and look at Alistair Black immediately goes after the back with a slam into the cage goes for the arm but Pete Dunne now trying to get some leverage on his side too and although you'd argue that Alistair Black is the fresher man Pete Dunne still has the adrenaline pumping and you see that goes for a kick but Alistair Black with a single leg Boston Crab working over the knee of Pete Dunne and now Pete Dunne with the ankle Pete Dunne with the ankle applied onto Alistair Black but Black kicks his way free and another series of shots from Black but a big time chop from the bruiser weight and a headbutt from Alistair Black and a V-trigger bicycle knee to the face and that rocked Pete Dunne is he knocked out the referee doesn't say so but he may have to tap out soon an armbar applied and look at the way he's bending back that shoulder Pete Dunne now leaning into it it seems and look at this fish hook in and now look out oh he went to break the fingers and throws him into the cage but moonsault's over it and now a triangle triangle choke applied from the bruiser weight is he going to knock out Alistair Black here and become the new 24-7 champion but Black look at the strength to powerbomb him into the cage and now Brainbuster maybe no oh, Pete Dunne lands on his feet and delivers a brutal forearm another bitter end he could not hit it on Roderick Strong but he hit it on Alistair Black is he knocked out no he's stirring but Pete Dunne going in for the kill runs at him another vicious forearm into the cage and a northern light suplex from Pete Dunn who rolls through now trying for the arm bar and he gets it but look at Alistair Black trying to hook his fingers together to prevent Pete Dunn from doing too much damage and now throws him into the cage rolling through and now the sleeper Pete Dunn desperately tries to fight out of it rolls through though and Alistair Black with a kick and a blood mass Black Master Pete Dunn from out of nowhere and Pete Dunn is KO'd we saw it on Jorge Masvidal Israel Adesanya and now the bruiserweight has fallen and faded to black the black mass that brutal kick as we take a look at this match again considering Pete Dunn has just fought through against Roderick Strong and then had to compete in a second match he did incredibly well for himself including this incredible counter into the triangle choke Alistair Black though had a counter for everything Pete Dunne had even the bitter end wasn't enough to knock out Alistair Black and then this was the turning point the sleeper rolled through by Pete Dunne and then this kick was enough to stun Pete Dunne momentarily for Alistair Black to hit the black mass and retain the NLW 24-7 Championship but I have to say I applaud Pete Dunne for his effort winning the Blood Sport Tournament but Alistair Black still 24-7 champion but now he must look over his shoulder as he defends that tight wait a minute it's Shawn Michaels Shawn Michaels sneaking up and Michaels once again the 24-7 champion I cannot believe it well he said he was getting that title back whatever it takes and now Shawn Michaels running away as the new 24-7 champion what the hell's happening next time?